perfect. Well, hello there, everyone, and welcome along to a uh, very dark, a neutral tint, very dark evening from uh, Looseville in the centre of the UK in uh, on a uh, early November Monday evening. Welcome along, guys. Thanks so much for uh, taking the time to pop over and join uh, me and all your uh, other loose friends throughout the world. It's like a big party, like a big party at uh, Andy's house and you're all most cordially invited. And uh, you've got beautiful uh, November dresses on and outfits and you've gone to town. I'm, I'm thrilled and bowled over. So welcome along guys. I hope you're all keeping well and uh, I'm not doing too bad and Toby sends his regards to everyone. He's, uh, he's been up to mischief again, but uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. And at the moment he's watching some TV, a little bit of TV telly time. So we are, um, well, let's start off how we always start. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? Get your thinking cap on. We welcome our fabulous guests and see how they are and see where they are and uh, see who's going to be painting along with us this evening. So uh, let's have a little look. Who is first into the studio this evening? It is Cindy. Welcome along, Cindy. Great to see you there and I hope you're keeping well and uh, in New Mexico and warm. It's a warm day in New Mexico. My word, that sounds like I could do with a bit of warmth at the moment. It's freezing in the UK. Absolute, well, freezing for me anyway. Mine under, under 10 degrees. <coughs> so we could do with a little bit of uh, New Mexico weather. I do hope you're keeping well and uh, I do hope you enjoy our little paint along and it's fabulous what you've done with the studio this evening. You've made it nice and cozy. Got a few candles, they're great. And um, we've got the loose gang all lined up and they've got little head torches on because it's evening. And I understand now that um, the you've gone back an hour or is it forward an hour? I'm not terribly sure, but I think we're equal roughly in time. So we know where we're, we're going uh, time-wise, which is a useful thing. So great to see you. Thanks for the studio work and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing your painting from this week. So great to see you, Cindy. And Carolyn, welcome along. Good to see you there. And yes, there may be, there just may be a little dab of negative painting this evening. So I think if you're up for negative painting, fabulous. If not, I'll show you how to do it. Do not worry. I've been on a special course for negative painting and it was held at uh, Janet Carl's house. It's fabulous. Really fabulous. And uh, Snoopy was, uh, well, I say he was preparing the nibbles. He ate most of the nibbles. But that's the way little dogs are. And that's, that's how it should be. So great to see you, Carolyn. Hope you enjoy this evening's get-together. And speaking of the lady, the queen of negative painting, she is in the room, guys. Janet Kyle is with us. This is fabulous news. Great to see you, Janet. I do hope you're keeping well. And uh, little Snoops as well. It's fabulous to see you as ever. And your uh, your book is selling phenomenally well, phenomenally well. So good to see you. Let's have a little look. And it's a hot day, my word. 80 degrees. You are kidding my legs. I cannot believe that. Send us 10 of those degrees. You keep 70. We could do with another 10 over here. That'd be perfect. But it won't last in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Absolutely. Good to see you. Uh, uh, Janet, hope you do are keeping well and uh, throw a little biscuit for Snoops. That would be perfect. And Jenny Foles is in as well. I believe they've rode in together on a Harley D. Yes, I could hear the engine. Welcome. Welcome, Jenny, from St. Evanage. I do hope you're keeping well there. And it's great that you're residing in St. Ev rather than in Norfolk at the moment. Sometimes I'm in Norfolk, you're in St. Ev. One day we'll meet. Let's meet halfway. How does that sound? Good to see you, Jenny. I hope you're keeping well. I hope you enjoy our little painting this evening. And Scarlet, hi there. Welcome along. Can't believe it's this warm in November. Absolutely. I can't believe it's this cold in November. So we must meet halfway. It's a temperature thing. Good to see you, Scarlet. And Angelico, welcome along from a cold Italy. My word. That's I never thought I'd see those two words in a phrase. But apparently it is today, so uh, I hope the painting keeps you nice and warm and enjoying the uh, paint along Angelica. Good to see you. 
and Beverly hi there welcome from a sunny Atlanta oh my word you've got all, you've got all the sun over there guys ever since we've put the clocks back you've got the sun we've got the we've got the not sunny stuff but anyway good to see you welcome Beverly and Sharon hi there welcome and Sharon sends her good wishes to everyone around the world all artists absolutely we all deserve a round of applause, uh, Sharon. I do agree with that. 87 degrees, another hot place in Georgia, my word. And uh, Sharon says she's thrilled to see uh, the uh, painting we're going to do this evening. So I think you'll enjoy this one. It's a good one. It's very good. And uh, hi there, Alina. Welcome along from Liverpool. No doubt it's a little bit cold by the Mersey there, uh, Alina. Welcome along. And Teresa, welcome. Unusually warm, yes. That's what everybody's been saying, uh, Teresa, from a warm, unusually warm Vermont. So great to see you, Teresa. And thanks again for all your fabulous work um, helping out on the Facebook pages and various other bits. So good to see you there. And Linda, hi there from uh, Canada. Uh, NB, mm, MB, I can't even guess. You must tell me where MB is. I'm sure as soon as you say it, I will know. But great to see you, Linda. And Barbara from Atlanta, welcome along. And Marilyn from Santa Maria in California. And um, yeah, a, a good point, Janet. Equal rights now. Uh, if we change, will you be changing? Um, I think, no, I'm going to stay at. I'm, I'm a creature of habit, Janet. My clock's just fixed on eight o'clock. But I uh, hope you can join us whenever we will be available. And Leslie there, good. From Bonnie, Scotland. My word, good to see you, Leslie. And Nicola, welcome along from uh, Italy as well. So Angelica as well from Italy. That's all of Italy's covered. Welcome along. And Gilly, hi there, welcome. Good to see you. And Clive from Ottawa as well. Two hours out of cataract surgery, Clive. That is phenomenal. With round of applause for Clive for that. My word, for turning two hours, two hours. We'll, uh, we'll make it a good one for you, Clive. Good to see you, and I hope your recovery is uh, swift and very successful. So good to see you guys. Okay, are we ready? We've welcomed all the guests. We are ready. We're going to paint this week. We're going to do a little jar of flowers. Now, it's, the simplicity of it is amazing. You'll be astonished, but it's such a beautiful finish, and I think you'll be able to carry this idea into a lot of your other work. So uh, keep them peeled, and we shall uh, get going after a little slurp of tea. Oh, excellent. Good one. Good one. Right, okay. So a little bit of housekeeping. We've got the drawing available. If you click below, that will take you to... Um, the details of uh, what we're doing basically if you click on tonight's line drawing that should take you somewhere where you'll see the uh, the the line drawing you can either copy print off uh, do what you want with but the main thing it just gives you a basic idea to work along with so that's available it's uh, also on the broadcast page on that loosewaterlers.com i'll take you over there and Let's get going, guys. Let's get going. Enough waffle. Enough waffle from me. Let us pick up Peter the propelling pencil. There he is. The great guy. What a great guy. So we are... Let's have a little look. Just a quick thing, guys. Bear with me. Wasn't near enough. No. So, are we ready to go? Absolutely perfect. So I'm going to do a portrait... Uh, area, I'm going to have a dot at eight. Uh, area, I'm going to have a dot at the top on the left, dot down here, still on the left. We're going to bring a little line down. There we go. Okay, so there's my line. Go across, little line across the top there. Right, just tell me on the screen, guys. I think uh, I'll just try this with gaffer tape. Okay. Right, keep me informed, guys. I'll just click something over. It may give uh, itself in a second or two. Right, little line down here on the right hand side, and one straight across the bottom. 
Any better guys? Oh, I think that's moving a little bit more swiftly. Yeah, cool. Okay, we should be on it. Right, I've got the area I'm going to work with. And what I want to do is put a little dot in the centre across the top and a very, very light line down the centre. So light, it almost floats away. Okay, good stuff. Right, okay. Line down the centre. About a quarter of the way up, I'm going to put a little dot. And then another little dot about just over halfway. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I know what it was. I got a mouse stuck in my computer. Not using a mouse. Right, little width in the centre. And what we're going to do, just there, we're going to put a long, long rectangle. Okay, dokes. Very lightly done, yeah? Very lightly done. So about three quarters of the way up this rectangle, another little dot. And then from this dot on the left, I'm gonna do a very gentle curve, yeah? There it is, gentle curve. And then this side, I'm gonna do an equal gentle curve. Yeah? Now I sort of use my hand wrist to use it as a sort of compass. So I move my my fingers really, my hand, fingers under the pencil to get that curve. Okay, so there's the line either side and then a little line across, quite a light one. And then a slight dot, not slight dot, they don't need to exist, do they? A dot in the centre and a curve going from one side to the other. A little like the sun rising just over the horizon. Yeah? Okay, so we got that on. Then in the center, we want another little rectangle. And this splays out from this point to almost the same width out as here. Yeah, there's one. There's two. Well done. Well done you. You're going good. You're going good. Okay. Along here, we've got basically a long, a skinny little lid for the, for the, uh, for the vase there. Okay, cokies. Fabulous. And I might even stretch that slightly more. The longer you stretch it, the more elegant it looks. So we've got that on, line across. I'm not doing that my usual curve at the bottom, I'm just doing it straight across. That's all I want. That's what I really, really want. I'm very much like the Spice Girls in that respect. Okay, there's my vase. Yeah. Now, let's have a look. I think, yeah, we'll go up to about here. And all I'm gonna do is a few Wobbly circles, yeah, wobbly circle, wobbly circle. Two lower down, maybe one just here. One on a tilt. Now when I go over here, tilting them just means I'm squidging them. They're the same width, but they're squashed together a bit more. And again, another one. Circle mad, don't we? Circle mad. Okay, that'll do. In your circle. We've got another circle. So if you like doing circles, this definitely is the show for you. Circle in each of the centers. Okay, that's your flowers. That are your flowers. Right, next bit. All I wanna do is a few little ideas of leaves. So just think, this is all I do for a leaf, a little blob, left and right. That's how, that's how I do them, just very simple. And again, and a few just jutting out from the actual flower heads. Okie dokes, perfect. Right, down it, 
It's not Jaws, it's his shadow radiating from the left to the right. But just a, a little bit of a dramatic one. Okay, so all I'm doing is pulling a few lines across just to give that little uh, basic shape of shadow going from left to right. So that is the drawing, guys. That's all there is to it. Uh, I think the old camera's evened up now, so I know what it was. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, invest in more film, in some more film. That is fabulous news, Clive. That is fabulous news. So, drawing all complete. I'll give you a few more moments to uh, just do that. Don't rush it. Enjoy it. And really learn the principle of just getting it symmetrical and uh, nice and uh, in the centre of your work area. While you're doing that, guys, I'll just run through a few colours. Yep. So here's my palette. Freshly cleaned. And uh, interestingly, I've been, not maybe not this week particularly, but I've been uh, out a few new colours. So I think it was about time. And I didn't realise how many thousands about the studio. But what we're going to do, we're going to use definitely some lemon yellow. Cad orange, maybe a little bit of Indian red. Do you remember this one? We used it the other week, but it's definitely back on the palette. We're going to use cerulean blue, good old cerulean blue. A big cheer for cerulean blue. Cobalt blue, intense blue, or um, paleo blue, I think it's called. Really rich, vibrant little number for using that. Sap green. Green. I tell you what's happened with mine. I've ran out of his Winder and Newton, and I've been using Daniel Smith's sap green. Boy, has it got a punch! It knocks everything out of the ballpark. Put this near a few things, everything topples. And um, so that's a good one, but you need to use it with due care and attention. Perylene green, maybe a tad of turquoise, a little bit of mauve. And then I've got neutral tint as well. Okay, so they're all the little colours we're going to be using. Brushes are really going to be, I'm going to say, these three guys. Two daggers, so I've got Dangerous Dave and Mini Dave. And we've got Miss Rigger as well. So they're all the ones we're going to be using. And... Um, so if you've got your own loose gang, fabulous. If you've not, please just use ones that you've got nearest to mine. And they will uh, they will do the job. Yeah. But it's always worth considering your kit. I know it sounds like a promotional thing, but it's how else do I say it? It is really the kit is you are an extension of your arm. They really are, and uh, sometimes if you're fighting against the what you're actually using, you, you're tying one hand behind your back. So uh, anyway, enough said. I'll uh, have a little think about that one and uh, let me know. Right, okay, drawing already done. What would you do first, guys? If you were me, if you were sitting in the centre of Louisville, yeah. You've got your kit all ready. How would you approach this? Have a little think. Just have a little think. So we've got the uh, there's the finished picture on the little on the little uh, thumbnail. It's interesting to think how would you approach it. You think um, light to dark, yeah. So that's one thing. Go on, Cindy. Light colours first. Exactly. True. Very very true. The light. For the white, what a good catchphrase. Angelica, I hope I owe you some copyright uh, pennies on that one. Yes, it's very true. You've got to get your light stuff on for a start. You've got to get stuff on fairly rapidly. The longer you take, the, the more the paper's going to dry, the more the paint's going to dry, and the less it's going to flow. So you lose one of these main benefits of painting loose. Could be Jenny. 
Could be. It's if you lose the benefit of the flow, you, you're back to painting onto dry paper all of the time, and that's really a detailed approach. So uh, before you start a painting, always sit back and say to yourself, how am I going to approach this? What am I going to do first? Yeah. And some things will, will only come to you after you try a couple of times. But if you've got light, delicate areas, and then you put in real strong, heavy areas next to them, things are just going to bleed into each other. It's going to get overwhelmed and it goes, uh, it goes a little bit pear-shaped. So you're absolutely right. Well, the way I would approach it, and there are lots of different ways, but the way I would approach it is get the light stuff on first. Yeah. So my light stuff is going to be the vase. Yeah. And it's going to be the flowers because the white, basically. And I need to get those on fairly rapidly and um, consider where the light's coming from. So the light is coming from top left. You can bring it from top right if you like. And as an experiment, I would suggest you do this a couple of times and do it once from the light from the left and once from the right. So you really have to twist everything around. But again, it will give you a good little exercise in where that light's coming from, how it affects different things. Anyway, there's my job. Are we ready? Good stuff. Ready to rumble. So I'm going to start with Mini Dave, small dagger brush. He's got a little bit of water on him, yeah? Not too much. I don't stick the brush right in the water. It's about half in the water. And then I still dab it on a bit of tissue. So I know exactly what I've got on that brush, yeah? Water. Lights come in here. So I'm going to put some a little bit of water over this side of the vase, yeah? And leave this untouched. Cool? Cool. Okay. So, I'm going to start with a very weak um, very, very weak lemon yellow. Really weak, weak, weaker than me on a weekday. Yeah? I'm just going to put a tad of this just along this inner edge. Yeah? Really weak. You can hardly see it. There is some there, but not a lot. Then, cerulean blue. Really weak again. Just flicking that across. And predominantly on the dark side. So, you see, so even when you're doing vase that's very, very light, I've still got light and dark. Light being the white, yellow being medium, cerulean blue being the dark side. And the final bit, tiny little bit of mauve. Really, I'm just dragging this across on a continuous similar angle. Yeah. So just delicately put, no fussing about, all sorted. Right, okay. Now, a little bit of water on the right hand side of the flowers. And then I'm going to go with cerulean blue and a tiny bit of neutral tint. So neutral tint is basically black, just a fancy word, but really, really weak uh, application of it with the cerulean blue. Right, I'm going to start just one side of the centre. Let's start with this one. And then all I'm going to do is that. Just drag the brush out. Yeah. Then another one. Then another one. So I scurry around it, then just flick the lines out. So with Mini Dave, sometimes I'm pushing the brush down, it's quite wide, and other times I'm just really trying to be wafer thin with it. I'm varying the pressure on the brush. Yeah, another one, another one, and take it over the line as well. That means that the little circle we put on, just take it a bit beyond that circle. Because when we throw some stuff on in the background, that will uh, 
chop it out. It's it's stronger, richer, thicker colour, and you won't actually uh, you won't actually see it. Okay, so I've got that on. It's still a little bit wet in places, which is nice. And that's all I need. Right, come down this way, just for a few seconds, and I'm going to get a little bit of uh, Indian Red Coffee Strength on the brush. And this is sort of a, a Chinese Japanese vase. I'm not terribly sure of the difference. You know they've got those different patterns on them. With a bit of Indian red, just making something that might look like a a delicate leaf pattern on one side in the Oriental, and a little bit of Indian red just on the neck of the vase. So not on this top bit, just on the neck. Then I'm taking the colour off. And I'm going to go with a bit of uh, ultramarine and neutral tint. Now try to make this colour a little bit drier. That means picking it up more from where the solid paint is on your palette. If it's too wet, it splashes about too much. Now, I'm just dragging some the other way. Now, and that mist, that's because it's still wet and it's a little bit misty, and that's what I want. So I've got a lighter tone for the detail on the vase on one side, and I've got a darker tone on the other, but it's all purporting to show the same pattern. Indian red. A little bit of uh, the same colour as here, ultramarine and neutral tint. So I'm just putting those little lines on the neck of the bars. Okay, dokes. That's your lot. That's your lot. Right. Centre of the flowers. A tiny dob of water. Lemon yellow, quite thick this time, almost cream. Just at the top edge of the thingy-majig. Then a bit of cad orange at the base of that. basically on the right hand side that center then a tiny little bit of mauve as well right at the base of the orange and try not to make it too perfect try and make it a bit raggedy roo yep yeah. So there we've got the centres of the flowers. You're doing fabulously well, guys. Fabulously well. Right, next bit. Um, yeah, I'm going to still stick with Mini Dave. Now this time, what we've got to do, each think about what the next bit is. So this next bit is doing the foliage, the leaves, and using that to negatively chop out shape of the flowers so here it's going to go around here then down then round here to negatively pick out the flowers as we go sound like a deal excellent right mini dave a little bit of water and in places where you may go to put some more of the greenery I'm going to start with sap green. Maybe actually with a tiny bit of cobalt blue in it. Okay. Boom. When you put it down, keep it away from the main stuff for a start. So don't go right up to a flower and start picking at it. Just go in away from the flowers. Okay. And again, don't go out too far because until you've got some stuff on, 
you can't see exactly where you're going to be. You're right there, guys. Negative painting. Janet will be rubbing her hands and Snoops will be eating his treat. <laughs> okay. Now I've got a bit of darker stuff. So I've got a bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of perylene. I'm just dropping this into here. And I'm negatively just going around bits of the flower. Okay. When I pull this colour down, I'm pushing the brush and scraping it, and it's quite dry paint. Sorry for labouring the point about that, but it's quite beneficial if you can do that. Rather than move the brush quickly, I'm just putting it down and moving it slightly. Yeah. So that's that flower there, this bottom edge. I've got this flower here. So I'm pointing towards that centre. Yeah. Then a bit just here for the top of the vase. Even that's negatively picked out, look. Around this bit. Yeah. Cool. And then I'm just dropping a few darker bits into that. Okay, got that one on. Let's do a bit just here. Okay, so it's over this one. Scraping the colour out a bit. Into this one. So you, you, you're always looking round, yeah? I.e. you went that way, that way and that way. You're looking at three things. Me being a bloke, I, I can only do one thing. You're watching a little miracle here. Another one here. Yeah. See the flowers start to appear now. I'm trying not to make it too full at the top. And I might just have a little flower, just a green flower just going out there. Maybe I might add into one as well. All it is is a splodge. Don't overthink it. Okay. And a little bit of cobalt. Just dropped in. Hi there, Rosario. Welcome along. Good to see you there. So, got all that on. Now, I'm actually going to make one a little bit higher than a drew, so I'm going to go about there. Now, we're actually going to get some biggie stuff on. Yeah. In fact, I think I'm going to use Dangerous Dave here, a bit bigger. Use a bigger brush, if bigger brush as you can, when you're getting all the paint on. Bit of water along the top. A little bit down the side, but only bring it down to about the top of the, no, actually just halfway down the flowers. About there. Yeah, just water. Now what I'm going to do is a mix of intense blue and neutral tint. You ready? Even stronger. So this is strong stuff. Yeah. I'm keeping it away from all the stuff. I'm just nudging it down. Yeah. Voila, voila. Good. Okay. Lot of stuff on there. Lot of stuff. Remember, I'm working dead flat, so it's not rolling towards me. Now I've got Mini Dave. I've actually got a little bit of that colour on, 
but what I'm going to do is scoot around these items. So I've got a little thing here. But I'm not I'm not painting directly around the colour, the green. I'm painting fairly close, but I'm letting the colour stand out. I.e. the green with a bit of white around it so it stands out. And then I just need to pick around what's happening up here. So always do the things you know. So I know there's a here. Around that top edge. I know there's a flower here, so I can do a little bit there. And then once you've got those on, they give you, you know, it's easier to work around. If you do it methodically left to right, you run out of, sometimes you come up against, I'm not sure what that bit is. Got this bit sticking out, so that goes like that. Just leaving a bit of white around it. These could be leaves. And these nice little white blocks of paper looking through i.e. these little marks just give it a bit of movement so you don't have to fill them all in and it makes it easy once you once you leave a few then it looks more congruent to what the image is okay so we've got that over the top there, we've got this flower here, so it should end just there, so pull a couple of bits in there, yeah. We're back to where we were. So you see you've got all this liquid paint just rolling about, and come down to here. Now don't take it too far down because I want to bleed this off. If I can, I'll put in the application to be able to bleed this off. Right down to here. About there will do. Maybe let's just scoot in there a little bit. So it allows me to pick out this bit. Maybe a bit there. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Right, we've got that. Now, all I've got now is water on Mini Dave. I'm going to flick that back up from about here in to this paint. So now I'll just get a little bit of a cascade of paint going down from here. If it doesn't cascade, cascade it, give it a nudge. I'm going to drop a bit of the dark stuff just over this neck of the flower. Not flower, what are you on about? Vase. So I'm putting a blob of colour there. Cascade. Bit of water. So that's gone all the way down to the bottom. So it's real strong stuff and then bled off down this bottom edge. And again, it shows you why you need to be reasonably swift at getting the colour on. Hence, use bigger brushes. Put a tiny little bit in there. So I'll just leave that, that's enough. Go and get a bit of water. Then water again. A lot of water in this watercolour game. Don't try it without. Yep. So you've got a nice soft finish down here. Still a bit of paint on there. But nice soft light finish. Right, while we're at it, 
a bit of that same colour with a bit of mauve in. And what I'm going to do is drag this under the vase, then flick it out or drag it out like this. Okay, a little bit of water, soften it. A few little lines, they could be of interest. I'm actually going to whack quite a bit of colour in this corner because this is where. This is where you're standing with your herbal tea, prosecco, whatever you fancy. I.e., it's closer to where the viewer is, so it drags you down into this corner. Yep. Right. Super duper, Alice Cooper. Oh, Miss Rigger. There she is. Right, Miss Rigger is going to now apply a little bit of that background colour, neutral tint and patholo, patholo, path, dark blue. And she's going to pop in here and add a few little dark spots. Now these are dragging your eye through the image. She's also going to put a few little stems in. And allow that to flow through. So your stems are, you know, going up here, left a bit, right a bit. Ooh, and break turn, and break turn. And allowing them to chop into the flower a bit as well. Try not to do a full circle. Just doing little sections of it. Just there, I'm actually dropping a little bit over this one and onto this one. That's because that's overlapping it. It may do there. You can do a couple of them. Don't do them all because it gets a bit repetitive. Right, okay, a bit of water on Miss Riggs. So I've got this paint on. Now I can go and move it about a bit as well. So don't think you have to finish each little bit before you move on to the next one. I put liquid paint down, or sometimes it's dry and it's agitating a bit again. And then just pull the colour out, move it about, and do the wire to say. Like Lucy, was it Lucy? Did, Lu did Lucy do the Y2C? So I can't remember. Anyway, it's not overly relevant. Now I'm just going to drag a leaf over the front of that vase a bit. Why, you ask? Because that's what I want to do. And that's what you should say. Well, what, does, what will that look like? Remember, when you're an artist, there ain't that many rules. 
I think there's only one rule and that is to enjoy the process of creating well, you won't know if it works unless you give it a whirl So there's nothing to be afraid of, of trying to see what happens. That's where creativity comes from. In the doing, in the trying, not in the deliberation. Right, okay, looking good guys, looking good. Now I'm just going to take a little bit of the first colour which was mauve and cerulean blue. Coffee strength. I'm just going to add a bit of shadow to the vase. Now I need to predict where the shadow was. This is the lip of the vase. This is the overhang bit. So I'm going to say it goes just under there. But the shadow gets more pronounced this side yeah I'm going to go from here across and down and straight across and I'm going to pull that colour just across to this bottom edge now when you put the colour on, it can look a little bit strong. And I'm also leaving a wafer thin little line down this edge, just to pick it up. But when it looks, it's going to always look about 25% stronger than it is when it dries. So ultimately you need to get used to the putting it on a bit thicker. A few little dabs across the lip, and this could be shadows cast by the... Uh, stems onto the lip yeah right you're doing good guys you're doing good 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 right a little bit of mauve a little bit of neutral tint very weak so find a flat area where you've got nothing much no other paint on much at all and that's where you can make it thin yeah So all I'm going to do this time, just on the leaves again, petals, this all should be dry by now. I'm just going to mini Dave down. Now you can use some of the shapes that have formed there already on the first wave. Again. So you can hit some of these little um, petals, i.e. where that indentation goes there, you can purposely aim for that and still put these more onto the right hand side than the left. If you've got one that's overhanging the other, like that's on top of that, just put the colour underneath. That's just, I say simple negative painting, it's just negative painting, whether it's simple or complex, doesn't really matter. Bit on that side. And again, this side. Yeah. So that just darkens them down a bit and gives them a bit more um, substance. Let's have a little look. Anything else? 
maybe just the center Indian red maybe a bit of cobalty blue so just on the center I can do a little bit of darkness on the well the dark side Yeah. Just picks that out. Exactly so yeah, just build it up. Quite often people start painting like this at the beginning, but you've got you've got naught on. There's nothing on. Before you start decorating the room, as it were, you've got to build the house. And this is this is really where it tells you what to do. You know, you can see where the petals are now, you can see where the greenery is. All those little bits only start to show themselves after a little while of the painting. So it's still fairly always treat the first bit as you, you you've got every everything you need to do the job and you've got to just lay it out in the right order that's why a good idea to sit there and think what is the order of this what do I do first and then try it if that's not the order you'll know you'll know from experience of trying what was the order next time you'll remember if not the next time, the one after that you will, or the one after that, but you will eventually know the order. And if you watch different artists painting, you know, they might be superb at doing certain things and then totally at sea with other things. And it's because they've learnt the order of those things, but not the others. So these are just tiny little dabs now. That just add little nuggets to the image. And we're almost done there guys. So I'll link a little bit of splatterification. Only a bit with uh, a bit of sap green, a bit of perylene. And I'm pulling the splatter at the bottom as if it's hanging, draping over. If there's any spots you don't want, pick them off. If you just pick them straight off, off they go. Yep. So I think we're about there, guys. Very um, simply done in a fashion. Getting the drawing on, nice and even in the centre, and that was all done by these little dots here to find out where the centre of the page was. Getting that light on, and once you've got the light on, if you know where you go, if you know you're going to chop this out, it will really shine out slightly later on in the painting. Same with the flowers, get that light on. Where's the light? Where's that light? Always be asking, where's the light coming from? Popping round, well, we've got a little bit of decoration on here. Popping round with the leaves and foliage, just dropping that on nice and simply. Really just by the shape of the brush, That's that just allows you to do that. You're not fiddling about and contorting your arm to draw the leaves. Get it on, get the centers on, get all that color on fairly rapidly. And then be quite um, brave with your darks at the top. Work that down, chop into the colours. Because the only bits you're painting are around here. There's a few little dabs in there, but you just carve in a shape around the top. Let the water bleed up and then come down. Don't put the water in there and drag it because it'll you can't shake it off. That'll always come down nice big shadow here make this stronger at the bottom edge 
that's where you're standing, that's where you want to see it, and then go back, you, then you can do your fiddly bit towards the end, but not at the beginning, yeah? So anyway guys, that has been our little broadcast for uh, this Monday, uh, broadcast 12,962, something like that, I'm not terribly sure. Don't forget to sign your work guys, yeah? I want to see you signing your work. Because be proud of what you do. If you're proud of what you do, then it'll make you feel better and that will shine through in you all of the time. Yeah. So give this one a go. And if you've just given it a go, tell you what, give it another go. But this time, have the line from the opposite side. So twist it round and then that'll make you think, how's that light affecting it this time? Yeah. Give that one a go on uh, the various places on the members group on Facebook or on the uh, Loose Watercolours Facebook group wherever you may reside let's get them on there and let's encourage other folks to give it a go um, because it's a fantastic way to um, enjoy your hobby your leisure time it really is and it's brought me so much pleasure over this last year I've travelled over Europe quite a bit, painting in some fabulous places, Venice, south of Ireland, Poland, anywhere. So, um, and it's been great because when I get there, I can set my little ease up or sit in a cafe, just sketching away. And it brings so much uh, pleasure to me and the amount of people who will sit and have a tea you and it's a really engaging little thing to, uh, to chat about. You're not just talking about the weather, they talk about your work, you talk about it, they get interested. It really is, brings a lot of friendship, a lot of joy, and uh, it goes far beyond um, what you may even do in the studio. So uh, I really encourage you to do that and to get other people doing it as well. So, enough of my waffle. You've been stars as ever, all the time, um, enjoying the process of what we're doing in loose watercolours and uh, that's it for this week guys so this will um youtube for a little while it'll be over on my website uh, loosewatercolours.com forever and also don't forget i've got a little group on facebook that is uh, purely the live broadcast so that's a click button on youtube you can join that i think it's five dollars a month something like that but there's about 140 past broadcasts on there you can enjoy at your leisure so uh, you don't need to join the main site for that but that's a little add-on of uh, recently um, popped on but I forgot to tell people I really should have should anyway guys enough of me I've gone to get some something to eat and uh, maybe uh, get a chew stick for little toes I think he needs one it's about that time thanks for your company it's been as fabulous as ever do take care and I shall see you all again very, very soon. Goodbye.